In this video, we'll analyze six games, each in one of the most played openings by one of the greatest chess legends ever, Garry Kasparov, getting a glimpse at his powerful playstyle and scintillating strategy. The first opponent is Grandmaster Yevgeny Vladimirov, and Kasparov with the white pieces starts e4. Black replies e5, and white's knight f3 pressures the pawn, so knight c6 is played defending. Then Kasparov plays bishop b5, the Roy Lopez, an opening he's employed a total of 104 times. White's third move attacks the knight that defends the e5 pawn from the attack by white's knight. Black replies a6, attacking the bishop, and we notice that although white could take the knight after black recaptures with the d-pawn, white taking e5 would be met by queen d4, hitting the knight and winning back the pawn. Kasparov calmly retreats the bishop, keeping an eye on the knight. Black plays knight f6, attacking e4, and white castles so that if the knight were to take the pawn, he could skewer the knight and pawn with rook e1. Black continues bishop e7, clogging the e-file while preparing to castle, and white defends his pawn with rook e1. Black's b5 pushes the bishop back to b3, and black castles. Then white pushes a4, threatening to take on b5, which would exploit the pin on the a-pawn to the rook. Black maintains the tension, developing the bishop to b7, which defends the rook and eliminates the pin. Then white pushes d3, opening his queenside minor pieces, and black plays d6, solidifying his center. Kasparov strategically moves his knight to d2, planning a maneuver towards the king's side. Black's knight a5 hits the bishop, who drops back to a2, keeping an earnest eye on the king. With the knight out of the way, black pushes c5, gaining space on the queenside, while making it very difficult for white to break through in the center. White carries on his plan of rerouting the knight with knight f1, and black shifts his rook to the e-file, where it's centralized. White places his knight on e3, where it is spoiled with future potential squares. Black takes one of them away with g6. Kasparov follows with bishop d2, planning to take the knight so that the black queen is lured onto the a-file. Then he would take on b5, creating discovered attack opportunities on the queen with his rook, which would force black to recapture the pawn with the queen, giving white full control of the semi-open a file. So black blocks the bishop's attack with b4, but this closes down the queen side, and white can now turn his full attention towards the king side. He starts by hopping his knight to g5, where it coordinates with the bishop in attacking f7. Black shifts his rook over to defend, then white moves his other knight to g4, threatening to take on f7, and once the rook would recapture, he would fork the king and rook with knight h6. So black chops off the knight, inviting the white queen to join the attack after she recaptures. Now black should avoid trading the bishop for the knight, as the dark squares near his king would be seriously weak. He drops his other bishop to c8, attacking the queen. Kasparov sidesteps his queen to h4, threatening a checkmate on h7. Black pushes his pawn to h5, reducing the white queen's vision. She drops to g3, now threatening to take the pawn on f7 before taking on g6 with the queen, which would be bad news for black. Black lifts his king to g7 so that the g6 pawn is defended. White's clever bishop d5 not only attacks the rook, forcing black to waste a move by dodging, but it also boxes out the black knight who will have trouble getting back into the game. Next, white plays h4, defending his knight, so that his queen has freedom to move around. Black's double-edged queen d7 looks to create an escape for the black knight, but also move to g4 to exchange queens, which would halt white's attack. Kasparov, with no intention to slow down, moves his queen to e3, creating a dangerous battery aimed at the black kingside. Black's bishop b7 tries to exchange off white's dominant bishop, but there was a hidden threat last move that black missed. White finds the marvelous move, knight h7. This attacks the rook, and were the knight to be taken, then white's queen would swoop into h6 with check, forcing the king back to g8, 
Then white would take the pawn on g6, exploiting the pin on the f7 pawn to the king by the bishop, pushing the king to h8, after which he would take the pawn on h5, again with check. Once the king would move, doesn't really matter which square, white would lift the rook to e3, and the threat of sliding it over to g3 with check, while also making use of the bishop, if necessary, would be decisive. Black doesn't take the knight, instead capturing the bishop on d5 to eliminate any tactics with the pin on the pawn. Kasparov ignores the capture, swooping the queen onto h6 with check. The king going to h8 would result in knight f6 discovered checkmate. So the king drops to g8. Then white places the bishop on g5, coordinating with the knight on f6, and this is a very serious problem for black. Black's best choice would be capturing the bishop, and once the pawn would recapture, knight f6 would be a checkmate threat. So, black would have to play f5 to allow the rook to defend the f6 square. White would follow by capturing the rook, and after black would recapture, he would capture on g6 with check, before eventually recapturing the bishop, going up the exchange and a pawn. In light of these grim variations, black decides to capture the pawn on e4 since he was going to lose his bishop anyway. But upon playing this move, he realizes that white has a winning combination and black resigns the game. Can you find white's checkmate in two? The knight and bishop converge at f6 and one piece should land there. Knight to f6 would be a checkmate in 3, but the move Kasparov would play instead is bishop to f6. This threatens queen g7 checkmate, and the only way to stop that would be capturing the bishop, after which white would recapture with the knight, which would also give checkmate. The next opponent is former British chess champion Michael Adams, and he starts e4. Kasparov with the black pieces plays c5, the Sicilian defense. White carries on with knight f3, preparing to open the center with d4, and black plays d6, stopping white's e5 so that his knights can develop safely. White thrusts forward with d4, black captures, and the knight recaptures, landing in the center. Black attacks the e4 pawn with knight f6, and white defends with knight c3. Then Kasparov plays a6, the Nidorf variation of the Sicilian defense, an opening he has played 176 times throughout his career and by far his preferred choice against white's first move, e4. By playing a6, white aims to deny the b5 square from the white knight's and light squared bishop, while maintaining flexible development for his minor pieces. Games in the Nidorf are often sharp and exciting, leading to decisive games. White replies by developing his queen bishop, hinting at a potential queenside castle. Kasparov pushes e6, taking the non-confrontational approach in the center while opening his bishop. White develops his bishop to e2, stopping the black knight from going to g4, and black places his queen on c7, where it stares down the semi-open c-file. White's queen d2 finishes up preparations for the long castle, and black launches his b-pawn, expanding on the queen side while opening the square for his other bishop. White doesn't want to allow b4, kicking the knight, so he pushes a3 before white develops his bishop, adding an attacker to the pawn. So white defends with f3. After black develops the knight to c6, white castles queen side, setting the stage for an exciting middle game. Kasparov immediately opens lines with b4. White cannot allow black to capture on a3, as it would shatter the king's shelter. So he takes the pawn, and the black knight recaptures, drawing near the enemy king. White initiates a pawn storm of his own with g4, and black develops his final minor piece with bishop e7. g5 kicks the knight back to d7, and h4 proceeds the onslaught. Black's knight c5 reroutes the knight towards the queen side, and white shifts his king to b1, getting off the enemy queen's line of fire. Black shifts his rook to b8, giving the white king no room for comfort, before white pushes h5, and we are just about at the pinnacle of action.
Kasparov fearless, castles his king right into the heart of the storm, and white pushes g6, making first contact with the black kingside pawns. Black calmly makes use of the opened up square to place his bishop on the longest possible diagonal, where it defends the kingside while building up pressure on white's queenside. White slides his other rook over to the g-file, peering at the black king, and black drops his bishop back one square, slowly awakening his rook's gaze. White's bishop g5 attempts to remove the pivotal defensive bishop, but black moves it to e5, keeping it on the board. Then white finally releases the tension, capturing the pawn on h7 with check. While the king could slide over and use the white pawn as a shield, Kasparov, with calculated courage, captures on h7, walking his king into the open. It's difficult here for white to find a good move. h6, for example, would be met by g6 closing things down. Persisting on the bishop exchange with bishop f4 would be met by a capture on d4, followed by a fork after the queen would recapture. White's best bet would be bishop e3, after which black would slowly build up a powerful attack on white's king. Instead, white goes for knight b3, trying to contest black's powerful knight. And this is where things begin to fall apart for black. Kasparov chomps down on the pawn on c2, sacrificing his knight, but removing a defender from and opening an extra attacker onto the now hanging white knight. White counters by taking the knight on c5, and black plays knight a3 check, exploiting the pin on the pawn to the king. The king moves off the file to a7, and while white is now able to capture the knight, after black recaptures the knight on c5 with his queen, taking the knight would hang the knight on c3. So white moves his knight to a4, attacking the queen, in an attempt to force the retreat, which would allow him to take the knight and at least go up a piece despite the suspicious state of his king. And this would all be fine and dandy if not for one move. Can you find black's winning move? So the queen's under attack, but to find this move, one must realize that she doesn't need to go anywhere. The move Kasparov plays is knight c2. This cuts off the queen's defense of the b2 pawn, and were the white knight to take the queen, then rook takes b1 would be an aesthetic checkmate. So we can deduce that white's knight must not move, but black is also threatening to sacrifice the rook on b2 before moving the queen to a3 with check, followed by taking on b2 with checkmate. White moves the king to b1 so that queen a3 wouldn't come with a check anymore. Kasparov finishes the game up with queen a3 anyway, and this compels white to resign the game. If white does nothing, then rook takes b2 would lead to checkmate by queen b2, or queen a1 depending on white's follow-up. The king running away would be no better since black would move the queen to a1 with check, which would force black to take the knight before he would capture white's knight again with check, pushing the king back, followed by bringing the other rook in, pushing the king again, and then taking the pawn on b2, which would be decisive. The only other option for white would be taking the knight, after which black would gather the other rook to c8, attacking the queen, who wouldn't be able to move without giving up either the knight or checkmate. The queen would of course choose the king, and black would take the knight, not only emerging up a pawn, but threatening the unstoppable rook takes b2. White's menacing h6 here wouldn't do much as it would be met by g6. White could try bishop d1 attacking the queen, but black would take twice on e4, each time with check, which would get two pawns for the bishop. And once the king would move, with the square he would choose not making much difference, black would take on b2 with the rook, and white would be forced to give up the queen to stop all sorts of checkmating threats. The next opponent is Sergei Begun, and Kasparov with the white pieces begins d4. Black replies d5, and Kasparov plays one of his most powerful openings, c4, the queen's gambit, which he has utilized 139 times. 
The queen's gambit is traditionally described as a gambit because white appears to sacrifice the sea pawn. However, this could be considered a misnomer as black cannot keep the pawn without incurring a disadvantage. Black replies e6, solidifying his pawn while opening his kingside bishop, and white adds pressure to black's center with knight c3. Knight f6 develops while defending, and white follows suit with knight f3. Then black uncorks c5, creating considerable tension in the center. Now capturing c5 would only help black develop. Kasparov instead captures on d5, and black, not wanting to get a somewhat weak d-pawn, recaptures with the knight. White continues with e3 securing his own pawn while opening his bishop, and black adds pressure to d4 with knight c6. White's bishop advances to d3, staring down black's kingside and paving the way for a castle, before black moves his bishop to e7. Then both sides castle. At this moment, Kasparov spots a way to restructure the central position to his advantage. He captures the knight on d5, and black recapturing with the pawn would allow white to give him an isolated pawn by capturing on c5. So black takes with the queen. Then white pushes e4, attacking the queen, who flees back to where she came from, and then white grabs on c5, and after black recaptures with the bishop, white pushes e5, opening the bishop, and gaining substantial space on the king's side. This makes things ideal for an attack on black's king. Now white is potentially threatening a Greek gift sacrifice with bishop takes h7, followed by knight g5 and queen h5. Or another option would be simply to take on h7, and once the king would recapture, queen c2 would regain the bishop by way of a fork after which white would emerge up a pawn. In light of all of this, black drops his bishop back to e7, guarding the g5 square from the knight, and getting out of any tactics. Kasparov lifts his queen to e2, preparing to create a brutal battery carrying with it a checkmate threat. Black's knight b4 hits the bishop, and white tucks it in nice and snug on b8, where it maintains a fervent glare down the diagonal. White's not really threatening much just yet, so black proceeds development with bishop d7. White pushes a3, kicking the knight back to d5, enabling him to lift his queen to e4, threatening queen h7 checkmate. Black's best defense, and the one he plays, is g6, blunting the diagonal. Kasparov immediately exploits the new dark square weaknesses with bishop h6 hitting the rook, who shifts over to e8. In aggressive fashion, he follows with h5, preparing to throw everything but the kitchen sink at black's king. Black cannot do much to stop it, and he deploys his queen onto b3, where she attacks the b2 pawn. White unfazed pushes h5. Now black could take the pawn on b2, attacking the rook, but white would just slide the queen over to g4, with the threat of capturing multiple times on g6. Were black to take the rook, white would capture on g6 with the pawn, threatening two discovered checks, which would both lead to a checkmate on g7. So black would be forced to recapture. Then white would take with the bishop, not only hitting the queen, but threatening a, again the same discovered checkmate in two. Black would take the other rook, which would get two rooks for the queen, but then black would still have serious issues to deal with. Black would have to slide the king over to avoid checkmate, after which white would take the pawn on f7, threatening the rook and checkmate, which would force black to give up material. Back to the game. Instead, black pushes f5 in an attempt to lock up the king side while attacking the queen. Kasparov captures en passant, and black recaptures with the knight, which attacks the queen and the pawn. White retreats the queen all the way back to e1, keeping it where it can still jump forward with potential threats in the future, and black captures the helpless h-pawn. White leaps his knight to e5, coordinating with the bishop on g6, but black replies with bishop e5, attacking the trapped rook. Yet, Kasparov isn't worried about the rook. He has a brutal winning combination. Can you find white's best move? 
Black's kingside is on the verge of collapse, and the move Kasparov plays to send it tumbling down is bishop takes g6. White is threatening not only the knight, but to sacrifice the bishop again on h7, and once the rook king would recapture, white would lift the queen to e4 with check. The king would go to h8 to avoid any subsequent checks, but knight f7 would push the king back to g8, after which queen g6 would lead to a checkmate in 2. So black drops the knight back to f6, saving his knight and defending his pawn. But white takes on h7 anyway. Black, aghast, gives up the ghost and resigns the game. Were the king to capture the bishop, then queen b1 check would not allow black to capture the other bishop because the queen would go to g6 with checkmate. So after capturing the bishop and queen b1 check, the king would be forced to h8. Then white would play knight f7 check, luring the king to g8, after which queen g6 would be checkmate. Taking the bishop with the knight would be met by queen e4, and black would have no way to stop the queen from giving another check. Knight f8 stopping the queen from going to g6 would just be met by queen g4 check, and checkmate on g7 would soon follow. Finally, the king could try dodging, but then knight f7 check would force the king to capture the bishop, after which queen b1 check would push the king to g8, and queen g6 would be checkmate. The fourth opponent is Grandmaster Slavoljub Marjanovic, and Kasparov with the white pieces starts d4. Black replies knight f6, and white pushes a second pawn two squares battling for the center. After e6, preparing to meet knight c3 with bishop b4, Kasparov uncorks knight f3, the anti nimzo Indian, an opening he has played 136 times. In developing the knight to f3, instead of placing the other on c3, white doesn't give the option to black to pin the knight to the king, which could be inconvenient. The knight on f3 still fights for the center, but has the drawback of blocking the f-pawn, which is sometimes pushed in aggressive variations. Black proceeds with b6, looking to fianchetto the queen bishop. Kasparov meets this with g3, trying to contest the long diagonal with his own bishop, and in essence, not allowing black to have anything he wants. Black's bishop b7 is followed by bishop g2, and the staring contest has gotten underway. Black develops the other bishop to e7, paving the way for a castle, and both sides proceed to get their kings to safety next move. Then fireworks are set off, as white lunges ahead with d5. This sacrifices a pawn since black has ample coverage of that square. After black captures it, however, white leaps his knight to h4, creating a pin on the pawn to the bishop. But black can support the pawn with c6 while breaking the pin. White captures the pawn and black recaptures, centralizing the knight. Kasparov's rationale behind this pawn sacrifice becomes clear as he jumps the knight to a powerful post on f5. The knight cannot easily be kicked as g6 would create dark square weaknesses around the king and white could chop off the black dark squared bishop as well. Black drops his knight to c7, making way for the d-pawn to advance. White develops his knight to f3 and black temporarily takes control of the center with d5 only for it to be immediately challenged by white's e4. White's last move also opens the queen's path to g4, where it could wreak havoc on black's kingside. So black places the bishop on f3, where it can guard the king. Kasparov captures the pawn on d4, and while black could recapture with the knight, the outcome would be similar, which is the isolated pawn on d5 after the recapture. White follows with bishop f4, pressuring the knight, and black replies with knight b to a6, protecting it so that the queen is not tied down to its defense. White's rook e1 gets another piece into position, before black lifts his queen a square, finally putting the question to white's advanced knight. White counters with bishop h3, with the serious threat of knight h6 check, which would win the queen. Black's best response would be just to move the queen but he instead shifts his king to h8, where it can't be checked by the knight. The king, however, is slightly misplaced on h8, and Kasparov begins a long-winded plan to exploit this fact. He starts with knight e4, making use of the pin on the pawn to the queen to attack the bishop, 
and maneuver the knight towards the king's side. Allowing the bishop to be captured would be troublesome, so black gets it out of the way by capturing on b2. Then the knight jumps to g5, threatening to bring the queen to h5, after which the only way to stop checkmate on h7 would be pushing the pawn to h6, but white would sacrifice the knight there, not only threatening brutal discovered checks with the queen, but attacking the queen with the bishop. So black gets the queen out of the view of the bishop. Kasparov advances his knight deep within enemy lines on e7 where it hits the queen and confines the black king into the corner. The queen flees to f6 and things are about to go from bad to worse for black. The knight stunningly sacrifices itself on h7, hitting the enemy queen while hoping to be captured so that the white queen could charge h5 with a decisive conclusion. Black's queen dodges to d4, offering an exchange, and naturally her counterpart politely declines, choosing h5, where it peers black's king. Black plays g6, attacking the queen, so that were the knight to move, black could just capture her. So she drops to h4, before black bites the bullet and takes the rook on a1, leaving his king in a suspicious situation. White has a way to win the game. Can you find the checkmate in 3? There are actually two ways to win, and they both take advantage of the discovered check possibilities. White could take the rook with check, forcing the king to g7, after which queen h7 pushing the king to f6 would be met by knight g8 checkmate. Instead, the move Kasparov plays is knight f6, and this convinces black to resign the game. His only option would be to move the king to g7, and white would swoop the queen to h6, sacrificing the knight, which black would be forced to take. The finish would be bishop g5 checkmate. The penultimate opponent is Grandmaster Wolfgang Unzicker, and Kasparov with the white pieces starts e4. Black replies e5, and white pressures the pawn with knight f3, so black defends with knight c6. Then Kasparov plays d4, marking the Scotch game, an opening he has played 33 times throughout his career, and one in which he was instrumental in bringing back to popularity. In using the Scotch, white aims to dominate the center by exchanging the d-pawn for black's e-pawn and getting the sole central pawn. Black doesn't really have a good way to maintain the tension, so he captures, and black recaptures centralizing the knight. Black capturing again would allow white to activate the queen, so he instead moves the bishop to b4 with check. White blocks with c3, and the bishop drops to c5, adding an attacker to the knight. Kasparov slyly moves his bishop to e3, threatening to take the knight on c6 with an attack on the queen and a discovered attack on the bishop. So black retreats the bishop to safety on b6. White's queen g4 makes use of the bishop's absence to attack g7, and black replies with queen f6 defending the pawn while building up pressure on the knight. White drops the queen to g3 with eyes on c7, but this allows black to win a pawn by capturing on d4. White recaptures, black takes again, leading to an exchange of bishops and the queen landing on d4, where it hits the b2 and e4 pawns. Kasparov defends them both in the only way possible, knight c3. While black is up a pawn, he is seriously lagging in development, and if he doesn't do something soon, white may gain a big initiative. So he brings the knight to e7, preparing to castle, allowing white to take the pawn on c7, which he does. After black castles, white swings the rook over to d1, attacking the queen, who runs to b4, counterattacking the pawn. White lifts the rook defending, and black moves the knight to g6, where it can be slightly more active. After white develops the bishop to e2, preparing to castle, black aggressively pushes f5 to weaken white's center and get an open f-file for the rook. This move, however, slightly weakens the king side, and Kasparov not being one to mess around with, starts taking advantage with bishop c4 check. The king moves over and the white knight hops to a dominant post on d5 where it attacks the enemy queen. 
She ducks to a4, and white takes the pawn on f5, luring the rook off the back rank once it recaptures. White castles to safety, and black, beginning to notice the frailty of his king position, asks for a queen exchange with queen c6. This also hits the bishop, so white drops it to b3, allowing black to chop the queens off the board, which he does. White's knight recaptures, attacking the rook, who shifts to its only available square, b8. Kasparov shifts his rook a square, where it unlocks its full potential along a bare e-file. Thankfully for black, rook e8 can be blocked by his own rook with the help of the knight. On the other hand, black needs to figure out a way to develop his bishop, and the d-pawn cannot move without being captured. So black plays b6, opening another pathway for development. White follows with a slick move. Knight b5, which looks like it hangs the knight, but black's rook is stuck defending the back rank, so it cannot capture. Black develops his bishop to b7, believing he solved all of his problems. But white has one move to gain a decisive advantage. Can you find white's best move? Two of black's pawns are hanging, but they're both poison. Knight takes a7 would lead to a trapped knight, and rook takes d7 would result in an unfortunate fork. Yet white is able to exploit black's weak king, and the move Kasparov plays to do this is knight d6. This attacks the rook and the bishop, which if captured, would require the other rook to leave the back rank to recapture. This means black's rook must stay along the f-file to defend the back rank, and black drops it to f8. Then white plays knight f7 check, forcing the king into discovered check territory. The king's not going anywhere, and white remains patient, winning the pawn on d7 with his rook. Black, realizing he just has no way out of this mess, resigns the game. White's threat is to win the full bishop with knight d6, discovered check. White is also threatening the crushing combination of knight e5 check, pushing the king to the corner, followed by taking the knight, which would open the h-file, after which white would lift the rook to e3 with the intent of delivering a virtually unstoppable checkmate on h3. Black's best possible move here would be bishop c8, hitting the rook and guarding the diagonal. Kasparov would move the knight to d6 with check, and after the king would move over, he would play rook f7, which would threaten to take the rook, and once the knight would recapture, he would play rook e8, pinning and winning the knight. The black rook wouldn't even be able to move, because then white would drop the rook back to f3, and the black rook would have nowhere safe to go as it must defend the back rank, and were it to end up on d8, knight f7 would fork the rook and the king. So black just has to leave his rook there and let white take it, which means his bishop must move in order to open the rooks to one another. But the bishop would have very few options that would be safe from the resulting discovered checks after the knight would go to f7. Its only choice would be a6. White would win the pawn on a7, and then the bishop would be goner, a goner for real this time. For example, bishop d3 would be met by knight f7 check, and unless black would want to give up a full piece by moving the king, he would have to give up the exchange, which would be just too large of a material deficit. In the final game, and probably the best of the bunch, Super Grandmaster Evgeny Bereyev starts d4 and is met by knight f6. White continues c4, and Kasparov unveils his all-time favorite opening, g6, the king's Indian defense. With the king's Indian, black deliberately allows white control of the center with pawns, planning to attack it from the flanks, and later to challenge it. White develops with knight f3, and black fianchettos the bishop, giving his king castling rights already. After knight f3, black gets the king to safety, and white's e6 looks to develop the bishop in order to do the same. Kasparov quickly begins his fight back in the center with c5. Although white could push the pawn gaining space, he instead develops the bishop to e2. Black takes the opportunity to exchange a wing pawn for a valuable central pawn, and white recaptures. 
Then black places a pawn of his own in the center with d5. White castles and knight c6 pressuring d4 is met by h3 limiting the black bishop's options. Black advances it to f5 where it stares down black's queenside before white swipes d5. Black recaptures with the knight and white lifts the queen to b3 where it threatens the knight and the pawn on b7. While black could take white's knight, it would allow white to recapture with the pawn and get a sturdy central construction. So black drops his bishop back to e6, indirectly hitting the queen, but allowing white to capture on b7. With the queen gone from its original square, the d4 pawn's defense has diminished, and Kasparov grabs it with his knight. White takes back, and the bishop captures, landing on d4, where it slices the board into four sides. Yet, the one diagonal it leaves behind is the one white's bishop takes as it attacks the enemy rook. Black counters with rook b8, hitting the queen, and with only a couple of options, she chooses a6. Black takes the b2 pawn behind, removing the defense of the white knight, who devours black's knight on d5. Black recaptures with his queen, preparing his final combination, as he leaves his rook still on prise. White captures it, Kasparov recaptures, and now white has some things to worry about. His rook is being indirectly hit by the bishop, so black could at any time play rook b6 to win back the exchange, emerging up a pawn, because white wouldn't be able to capture on a7 without allowing black to then move the rook to b1, which would win a full rook or the queen. In light of this, white should probably move the rook, but he also knows that he would not have an easy time were he to allow black to take the pawn. Then black would have a bishop and two pawns for the rook, which is equal material, and some might even prefer black's side with the two bishops and past a pawn. So white pushes a4 in hopes that he could hold a draw after giving back the rook after black's rook b6. Kasparov has different things in mind, as he drops his rook to b3. Now black is preparing a stunning sequence, and while white may have a couple of ways to stop it, none of them end well. After a move like bishop f3, just as an example, black would take it, sacrificing the exchange. White's recapture would be met by queen g5 check, and there are a number of variations here, but the idea is that the queen and two bishops attack would be decisive. Now white doesn't actually see black's checkmating pattern here, and slides his rook over to d4, pinning the bishop to the queen, falling right into the trap. Black has a way to win the game. Can you find the checkmate in 4? With the queen and bishop's vicious gaze commanding the king's side, Kasparov applies the finishing touch with the elegant move, rook g3, exploiting the pin on the pawn to the king to threaten checkmate on g2. White cannot see a way to stop what's to come and resigns. Now this is a checkmate in 4, but a couple of those moves are just white delaying things. Queen c8 check would just be chopped off by the bishop. Bishop f3 blocking the queen would also be munched because of the rook's pin to the king. Then white could make whatever move he would like. The ensuing queen takes g2 would be checkmate. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.